Today, we're going to talk about what some of companies just like yours are struggling with in order to stop cybercrime. Then we're also going to talk about some of the uh, strategies and tactics that you can take to protect your company's assets and data. So let's kind of dig into it. Over here, we have our before scenario. What are we doing right now? Or what are the struggles that we're going through right now? First, usually at the top of the list, there's not enough time. We saw from the polling questions that you're spending either two to three or four to eight hours a week trying to sift through the alerts and the events that are coming from those tool sets trying to find that needle in the haystack. I would argue that if you're sifting through all that unimportant information to try, try and find the one or two things that are really a threat to your business, you're wasting time because you're looking at stuff that just isn't important. Alternatively, which some of you said in the polling question, I've just kind of given up and I hear that from time to time. If your alerts are just going into some bucket that somebody doesn't have the time to look at or just has you know, gotten, grown tired of it, you're probably missing threats. The next thing that I hear about most often is that customers don't have like an overarching security strategy so they know where their risk is and what they need to do to fix it. Generally, what happens is a problem pops up. You get breached or a known vulnerability or something like SolarWinds or the exchange thing comes out. And we go out and buy a tool to fix that problem. Only to find out that six months into the implementation, it's kind of working, but we realize that we have to hire one to two full-time employees just to operate that one tool effectively, let alone the other 10 to 15 tools we have. So honestly, if, you're, if you don't have a security strategy and you're just kind of plugging holes here and there, I would say that you're wasting money on tools that might not be able to fix the real problem. And then finally, which I didn't write down here, I don't think, I have to really spell this one out. Breaches. It's not if you're going to get breached. It's when you're going to get breached. And how long will it take before you detect that breach and respond to it? If it's not fast enough, you could be fined. I mean, that's potential. Or like what happened in the previous whiteboard, you could have a loss of reputation, which leads to a loss of customers, which eventually leads to a loss of revenue. Or let's say you get hit with ransomware. What is your maximum tolerable downtime? What is the amount of time that you don't have access to your data or your assets before it's crippling to your business? These are just three of the struggles that we're going through in our before scenario. And these are real business negative consequences that can happen if we continue operating in the same way that we are today. However, I'm not here to talk about just the bad stuff. Let's talk about the good stuff too. What does our cybersecurity garden of Eden look like? What is our perfect place? Well, I'd say we need to prioritize the alerts. If we can look at just the top two to five things that we really, really need to fix, then we're saving time. And if we're saving time, as the old adage goes, time is money. So if we're saving time, we're saving money. The next after scenario in our cybersecurity Garden of Eden is being able to demonstrate security posture. Imagine a world that the next time an auditor or the board comes in and asks you, what is your cyber strategy? And you can hand them a report that you have on the ready instead of having to go to your 10 different tools, collect information, build a report and give it to them. If you could just hand them a report and say, yeah, here's our risk level. 
here's the uh, threats that we mitigated last year. If you can demonstrate your security posture, it'll be easier for you to pass your audits. Now, there's another thing about passing audits which could be even more potentially beneficial to you. You could, if you can demonstrate your security posture, then it's likely that you can meet compliance faster. For certain revenue streams, you have to be compliant to different security frameworks. If you can demonstrate your security posture, get to that compliance, you actually have a leg up on your competition because you have faster access to those streams of revenue. And then finally, in our after scenario, we need to optimize our tool sets. We need to make sure that our tools are at the right patch level, that you don't have some random open port in your firewall that got missed in the configuration. If you can maximize your tools, then you're maximizing your spend. And then next time that you have to go to your boss or to the board or to the CEO in order to access funding for your next project, if you can demonstrate that you're using the money wisely, your project probably goes to the top of the list or you have access to that funding better. So in our before scenario, we have some hardcore negative consequences that can happen to your business. On the positive side, we see some good stuff over here, and these are real positive business outcomes for your organization. Unfortunately, to get from here to there, there's a pretty big chasm. There's a rather large delta in order to get from the before scenario to the after scenario. We call that chasm or that delta the required capabilities. What are the things that we need to do to get from our before scenario to our Garden of Eden? I would say first, we need to see everything. It doesn't matter if you subscribe to SANS or NIST or any one of the other security frameworks. Almost in every one of those, the first tenant is being able to see everything in the environment and what's running on it. So required capabilities, we got to see everything. Next, uh, I'd say we need to filter our alerts. In order to get from alert fatigue to prioritize alerts, we need to filter them down so we're looking at the really important stuff. Then I'd say in our required capabilities, number three, we need to take a proactive approach. Unfortunately, a lot of times we find ourselves in a reactive mode. Something goes bump in the night and we rush to fix it. We need to do that because there are always threats out there, but we need to make sure we're looking at the entire environment looking for holes that we need to plug so we're taking a proactive approach and then finally i'd say on the personnel side we need to get security experts we need to get people that understand security how to operate it so we can make sure that we're protecting ourselves with the right people